going. So let me right. start so with look. this. What is your alternative to what? To stopping the wholesale spread of infectious diseases, if not vaccines? Let's start with that question. I want the fucking alternative. Gotcha. So the alternative, and this is something that is common. Mess it up. Right? No, I'm not going to mess up that. Um, the issue is a deficiency of nutrients. And that's always been the cause. So the reason why we talk about vaccinations, I was going to start to show you that. First when, mistake. That's not a first mistake. First mistake. That's not a first mistake. Because the question is, I'm going to ask you. You have no, to. You can't ask me a question. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. You would have to answer. Show me the statistical data from hospitals showcasing that the babies that are born are not deficient in regards to nutrients, basic nutrients that should be in the baby's body by means of their mother passing it on to them. The alternative, is to, to the alternative is to reverse immune suppression okay. and a lack of effective immune system. And I'll give you an example. For example, if you have, I'm going to bring something up. Let's say you have. What about your immune system? I'm, we're going to get into the immune system. Yes, so we're going to go, <laughs> we're gonna go to your leukocyte. Probably not. And your lips know. So look, let's deal with it. Mm -hmm. So the way vaccinations work mm -hmm. is that you, great, you grab any kind of strain of bacteria or virus. And what you do is you multiply, you proliferate it, and you differentiate it over time. So that way that virus or that bacteria is no longer effective enough to infect the body and cause wholesale disease. Human right? So, so, like, but the danger that we talk about when it comes to vaccination mm -hmm. is the adjuvant. So now what I want purpose of an adjuvant, if anybody is not familiar with that, is that because that virus or bacteria is not effective enough to cause a widespread immune response, the adjuvants is added so that way the body can immediately respond not only to the adjuvants that you're inoculating the person with, but also any other kind of viruses, bacteria, and or allergens that's in that person's body that will predispose them going forward. This is where you get type 1 hypersensitivity. So science, we go against the science. Let's deal with science. No. Nutrients. So the immune system, and again, that means you're taking the allopathic route, which means you believe that human okay. intervention is necessary because the human body itself cannot protect itself. Therefore, it needs inoculation. Free. When this is something okay. that is Hold recent, on. this is something that's been going on for thousands of years. How old are y'all brothers? How old are y'all? Which one? You ever had chicken pox? No. How about you? No, I never had chicken How about you? Uh, I think so. How old are you? I've had 31. it. 31. My brother didn't get it, but I, I did get it. 28, I had chicken pox. Okay. I'm saying my kids don't know what the fuck chicken pox is. Why? Because they was inoculated? You, listen, your kids won't know. I'm saying that... that How did I get it? I don't know. I was I'm inoculated. Just, How did okay, I get so it? Measles, mumps, and rubella. How did I get wait, it? So we Wait, that's the data I'm going to say. So let me ask you a question. If I was inoculated for months and I get months and die, explain that for us. Well, what I'm saying is that your body actually must not, didn't build up enough immunity <laughs> to stop from catching the mice. And what caused Wait, it man. not to build up that immunity? Listen, to listen explain. maybe you should explain that to us. I got you. Well, okay, but, but yeah. the fact that you're saying that... So what I'm saying is this, passive inoculation was in certain environments, the body was not encountering enough bacteria in order for it to present itself from infectious diseases. So what the body has done, so what the body has done was on the skin, from a skin level, it has made the skin leaky so that way they can absorb more viruses so that way they can have a more built up immune system to face these things when they encounter it. You don't have this a lot in sub-Saharan African communities, right? You will have things that traits that we see, such as um, such sickle as uh, sickle cell. And sickle cell is a defense mechanism. It's the it's body scary. adapting to defend itself against something. Same thing, same, thing with, like, same thing. same thing with passive inoculation. So the point I'm trying to make is that if the body has developed a way uh -huh. to do passive inoculation, uh -huh. that means that it did not require intravenous method in order for it to 
predispose itself to fight against the disease. You should have your adaptive and your innate immune system. So wait, let me finish. Wait, let me finish. Thing with passive inoculation. So the point I'm trying to make is that if the body has developed a way uh -huh. to do passive inoculation, uh -huh. that means that it did not require intravenous method in order for it to predispose itself to fight against the disease. You have your adaptive and innate immune system. So wait, let me finish. Wait, I'm asking. Causes of autism and to prove that vaccine. No, but what I'm saying, did you hear not just say what I said? That means we're going to be beating around the bush. I did not say that vaccination is a direct cause or the okay, causal okay. agent right, for autism. Okay, good. Right, good, what I'm saying is it can contribute to it, but it's not the cause that no, makes that causal agent. No. And I want to tell you why it doesn't contribute to it. Can I get my point? Because okay. autism occurs in the No, 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 you are. But, but we're going to deal understand. with that. So, look. Right, so, sure. when we go back to diet, remember I told you, diet and a lack of nutrients is, is, is the source God. for an immune suppressed individual uh -huh. or an immune system that is not functioning properly. Yes. So, when you don't get your proper vitamins, okay. minerals, fatty acids, and amino acids, there is a breakdown and a very, I'm talking about at least 21 different bodily processes that fail because it's not getting all the nutrients that it needs to perform. I can example what I mean by that. When you look at yes, cancer, cancer at the root being a nucleic, um, mutated nucleus, right? Nucleus that's mutated on the P53 gene and then the P22 gene that's affected. Did you know that a lot of those mutations occur because the nucleus itself does not have all the nutrients at an intracellular level, intracellular level, mm. in order for it to perform these tasks? We have all that data. That's what I'm saying. I can share this stuff with you. I know, so in cancer, who's that we're introduced to that actually well, well, in the fetus during the developmental stage. Just hold on. You, man, it's like you can't... I didn't say it. nothing. You <laughs> focus on y'all for a moment and we talk. Just <laughs> okay, let me pray. Meditate. Meditate. Pray. Meditate. Mm -hmm. Come on, do your prayers, right? Get your leg thread, son. Relax. <laughs> yeah. Relax. I'm, 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 I'm saying, RBA, saying that they uh, use cancer. Uh, <laughs> my heart they, they, they use MRIs, serial MRIs, right? And what they found out is that when they're looking at the fetus in the womb, they're looking at the development of the brain, mm -hmm. they're studying the gray matter. Mm -hmm. And they know there's a, a, a distinct difference. You can even put up on line between a healthy fetus, right? That later on won't form autism, mm -hmm. and the fetus that later on cause a uh, uh, will form autism. And the same thing like Down syndrome. And this and the gray matter. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Thank you for saying that. And now the spectrum of autism has opened up, and now they're adding that into autism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, so people say the numbers are going up. No, the diagnosis of it is going up. They're mm -hmm. adding more things to the spectrum of autism. Mm -hmm. That's why the numbers are climbing. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get vaccinated. But right. they're, they're already, they, they, they have identified 99 genes in autism mm -hmm. now. So now they know the genes is asked to cause it. This is all before any vaccines are introduced in the body. The problem is, is that by the time you're given that full payload of, of, of vaccinations, is around the time, right, when autism starts to actually show itself. It's been there, right, since most people aren't scientists, don't, have, don't know none of this, right? All they know is by the time I gave my babies this, the vaccines, all of a sudden they started, you know, developing these things. But it, we talked about it. It had absolutely nothing to do with the vaccines. It's just that is the time period, 15 months in, right, when you start getting your vaccinations, mm -hmm. right, that that particular autism starts to show itself. 
it just coincides. Okay. It has nothing to do with that. That's my point. Gotcha. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to beat you up, but we're just talking. You know what I'm saying? We just saying. And what I'm saying is, is Mr. what I'm saying is, now look, what I'm saying is, there's a more conversation that we need to have in our community with yeah, ver- verifiable and validated data, right? Things that are in vivo and things that are um, in vitro, right? right? So in vitro, you do it in a lab, in vivo is actually in the real world. And that's the thing. A lot of these studies that they've done, a lot of it is in vitro and it stops there until you do the double bond placebo case studies that then the test it in vivo, right? So I, what I'm saying is this, right? I'm saying that there are cofactors that are responsible for the pathology of certain diseases. A lot of times it's not one cause or agent unless, unless it's an infectious disease. When you go into cancer, they tell you there's cofactors, but there's no mm-hmm. one cause or agent in right. regards to that, right? So another thing that I would, I would say to him in regards to talking about autism it's also, a lot of times when they get this control group is what they call them, that they do the test studies on, you don't have a lot of dis- you know, dispositional data on those individuals. Like, you don't know what their diet was, what their supplementation was, what other trauma or other things that they may have had that can also contribute to the issues with development of the fetus prenatal. So you don't get a lot of that extraneous data when you're looking at this scientific study. So a lot of times when I peer review studies, I like to look at that additional data to see if there's a way for us to get that information and use that information to either debunk or support any claims, or I want to say claims per se, but any kind of um, statements that we make that are unverifiable, right? So that's why I don't like to say things definitively because you can learn something new tomorrow and be like, damn, I was wrong, you know what I'm saying? But let's transition away from that because you spend a lot of time on that, but it's good. Don't cut none of this outside. Put this on record. Let people see that. But I represent one.